closet from the positioning of praise. About this time last year, I was going through an uncertain period of my life, a very uncertain period of my life. Um, I tried to pray, but <laughs> prayer was not coming out as such. And I thank God for His precious Holy Spirit. He laid it in my heart to read the book of, um, the book of Psalms every day. And I will read the book of Psalms audibly like uh, a third grade will do. Uh, just read it audibly. Even my daughter could testify to this because she used to look at me weird, but now they're used to me to doing that because since I got the results from that, I have never stopped. Every now and again, when I do get a chance, I spend a lot of time just reading the Psalms audibly over my life. I was going through that uncertain time, but I kept on opening the Psalms. Psalm 23, and I will read it. The Lord is my shepherd. No matter what I'm going through, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters, and he restored my soul. I declare the Lord will restore my soul in this uncertain period of my life. He leads me in the path of righteousness. Though I might not know where I'm going, I believe, and I will declare that every day that I know he will lead me in the path of righteousness. And though I may walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I know that you are with me and thy rod and thy staff will comfort me. And you have promised to lay me a table at the presence of my enemies and to anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over. And surely, 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 it's a must. It's certain. It's not maybe. It's surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So I will read through the Psalms like that and I will go to Psalm 24 Oh, and read that as well. The Lord, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof because he has founded it and established it upon the waters and the seas. And I will keep on reading and reading. Go to Psalm 121. My help cometh from the Lord. And I will read through and read through. And that's, my brothers and sisters, how God delivered me from that uncertain time. Before I know it, God opened doors for me which I didn't even realize they were just there. But how did I open them doors? Or how did God allow me to open them doors? By praise. Praying from the position of praise. So what I'm teaching you is not something that is made up. It's not theory. It's something that I practice and something that I've practiced. And I've seen it work for my life. And I know it will work for your life. Because praying from praise, in my opinion, is arguably the best form of prayer. Because every form of prayer, be it a petition, be it an intercession, be it a prayer or a plea for divine intervention into your situation, even praying in the spirit, whatever that prayer, it is incomplete without praise. I'm going to say this again. Your prayer, be it prayed in the spirit or be it praying in the spirit, praying for deliverance, praying for intervention and whatnot, that prayer is incomplete without praise praise i love praying from the position of praise because praying from the position of praise my brothers and sisters is a prayer which exalts god more than the problem Ooh, i'm preaching better than <laughs> to god be the glory type an amen type an amen if you are blessed it's a prayer which exalts god more than a problem. I went past one church and I saw a banner which blessed me. Uh, the, the, the banner over that church was written, stop telling God how big your problems are. Stop telling God that. Start telling your problems how big your God is. You see, my brothers and sisters, when you pray from the position of praise, you are not just there with this prayer request. You are there proclaiming right off the cuff, right from the gate, how big your God is. That is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. He is the first. He is the last. He is omniscient. He is all powerful. He is praying to exalt God instead of the problem. For example, our Father thou art in heaven. The model of prayer, as simple as it may look, the model of prayer that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught his disciples began with praise and ended with praise. How does it go? Our Father. He said, when you pray, this is what you do it at the beginning. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What is that? It's praise. You have to put praise in the beginning and in the end. For thine is thy kingdom, thy power and the glory forever and ever. That is praise. Every prayer, whether you are praying in the spirit, whatever method you are using, whether it's long or short prayer, it needs to begin with praise. And it needs 
to end with praise. Let it end and begin with praise. So in this way, my brothers and sisters, every prayer you pray, it becomes a prayer of praise. Remember, my message is not about a prayer of praise. No, my message is about praying from the position of praise. So every prayer that you pray, it becomes a prayer of praise. Hallelujah. You don't need to wait for a special day of Thanksgiving to give thanks to the Lord. You know you give thanks to him regularly anytime you pray, regardless of what you are going through. So I want to encourage you tonight or today to make a decision. Maybe this could be your action point. Make a decision today as you enter into your prayer closet. At this time that the world is spending more time in prayer. Make a decision today when you enter your prayer closet to enter into his gates with gladness. Enter his gates with joy. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Yeah, I know we hear of the death toll and I know we hear of some negative news and I know it's all true. But when you enter, don't let that change your attitude. Light shines in the darkness and darkness comprehend it. We don't allow darkness to comprehend us. We are the one to comprehend the, light, to the, the darkness. So enter into his cause with praise. Enter into his cause with thanksgiving in your heart. Right from the beginning, just declare. Begin to declare. Right at the gates, right at the outer court, declare, open up your gates, open up your everlasting doors. Who is this king of glory? Let the king of glory come in. But who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Open up your gates, open up your ancient doors. And let the king of glory come in. But who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Enter into his gates. With praise. Pray from the position of praise. Never let praise cease from your house. In this hour, never let praise cease from your house. Many of us are in a lockdown. I make sure, one thing I make sure is never to let praise cease from my house. Regardless what the news and the updates about this global pandemic are saying on a regular basis, I make sure that I never let praise cease from my house. Never let praise cease from your house. More than anything else, never let praise cease from your mouth. Never. Remember what the psalmist said in Psalm 34, and I'm beginning to close. Psalm 34, the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. How often? At all times. And he said, his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Even at this time, I want to charge you to praise the Lord. Lift his name on high. Give him glory. Tell him who he is. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. Tell him he's the beginning, the end. You are the first. You are the last, oh God. You are the author. You are the finisher. You are the same yesterday. You are the same today. You are the same forever. You change it not. You are omniscient, all-knowing. You are omnipresent. You are all-powerful. You are the Almighty. You are the El Shaddai. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are all-sufficient. You are God the provider. Even in this hour, you are my Jehovah Rapha. You are my healer. You are Jehovah Nisi. You are Jehovah Shalom. You are my peace and you are my banner. You are Jehovah Rafika. You are my shepherd. Even in this hour you are still my Ebenezer. You are my helper. Declare even in this hour who God is over your life. You are the king of kings. The lord of lords. The president over president. The prime minister over prime ministers. The president over president. The chief over chiefs. The mighty one. You are matchless in power. Matchless in majesty, matchless, limitless. Your power is incomparable. Your power is matchless. Your power is unlimited. Not even the sky is your limit. Enter into his court with praise. Enter into his court with thanksgiving in your heart. Never let praise cease from your house. Never let praise cease from your mouth. Let me close with Psalm 104. He said, let all that I am praise the Lord. Oh Lord, my God, how great you are. You are robed with honor and majesty. You are dressed in a robe of light. You stretch out the starry curtain of the heavens. You lay out the rafters of your home in the rain clouds. You make the clouds your chariots. You ride upon the wings of the wind. The winds are your messengers. Flames of fire are your angels. You place the world on its foundation so it will never be moved. You clothe the earth with floods of water. Water that covered even the mountains. Verse 7. 
At your command, the water fled. At the sound of your thunder, it hurried away. Verse 8, mountain rose, valleys sank to the levels you decreed. Then you set firm a boundary for the seas, so they will never again cover the earth. You make springs pour water into the ravines, so the streams gush down from the mountains. Verse 11, they provide water for all the animals, and the wild donkeys quench their thirst. Verse 12, the bears nest beside the streams and sing among the branches of the trees. Verse 13, you send rain on the mountains from your heavenly home, and you will fill the earth with the fruit of your labor. Verse 14, you cause the grass to grow for livestock and plants for people to use. You allow them to produce fruit from the earth, wine to make them glad, olive oil to soothe their skin, and bread to give them strength. The trees of the Lord are well cared for. The cedars of Lebanon that he planted. The, the, the birds, there the birds make their nests, and the stocks make their homes in the cypresses. High mountains they leave, goats, and the rocks of the refuge for the hyraxes. You made the moon to mark the season. The sun knows when to set, because you have decreed it. Verse 20, you send darkness, and it becomes night. When all the forest animals prowl about, then the young lions roar from their prey, stocking the food provided by God. Verse 22, at the dawn they slink back into the forest dens to rest. 23, then people go off to their work where they labor until evening. Verse 24, oh Lord, what a variety of things you have made. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of creatures. Here is the ocean, vast and wide, teeting with life of every kind, both large and small. See the ships sailing along and Leviathan, which you made to play in the sea. They all depend on you to give them food as they need it. When you supply it, they gather it. When you open your hand to feed them and they are richly satisfied. Verse 29, but if you turn away from them, they panic. When you take away their breath, they die and turn again to dust. Verse 30, when you give them your breath, life is created. You renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord continue forever. The Lord takes pleasure in all he has made. The earth trembles at his glance. The mountains smoke at his torch. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God to my last breath. May all my thoughts be pleasing to him for I rejoice in the Lord. The last verse 35 let all sinners vanish from the face of the earth. Let the wicked disappear forever and let all that I am praise the Lord. And he says praise the Lord. I want to encourage you to praise God. To pray from the position of praise. You will see the glory of God. And if you are here and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you might wonder, what's all this about? I want to encourage you. The reason you have so much fear in your heart of what's going on and you don't understand the peace that we have is because the peace that we have, we have received it from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, I give you peace, not as the world gives you, but peace that stems from above is peace which surpasses all understanding. If you want that peace, if you want joy unspeakable, full of glory, irrespective of what you may be going through, it is found in only one person. There's only one name under heaven which man may be saved. You might have heard that there's other ways, but the scripture tells us there's only one way, and that is Jesus. I want to encourage you to acknowledge him, to believe in your heart, and confess him as your Lord and Savior, and ask him to fill you with his spirit so you can walk in this path of righteousness and God will bless you as you do that hallelujah 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 and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the spirit rest and abide with you and your family and surely God's goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life as you dwell in his presence forever God bless you please do join us next time hallelujah thank you Jesus be now exalted.